It's Madden NFL 22, and the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Dolphins and the Silver and Black, and it comes your way next. NFL football has come to Southern Nevada as we are in the menacing new Allegiant Stadium here in Las Vegas. The atmosphere here, electric. No matter the venue, the home folks love their silver and black. They are fired up as their Raiders get set to face off with the Miami Dolphins. Brandon Garden with Charles Davis. And Charles, you look at our two quarterbacks in this one. Kind of an interesting pairing. Tua Tungavailoa of the Dolphins, Derek Carr of the Raiders. Yeah, you've got one guy who's part of the new breed, the run and gun, beat you with my legs kind of guys. And then on the other side, you've got your traditional pocket passer. He'll stand in there and throw the ball downfield, no matter what the turbulence is around him in the pocket. It's the first weekend of autumn, and the NFL is in full swing as off we go on EA Sports. And they will elect to not bring this one out as our first drive will begin at the 25. The Dolphins ready to go to work on offense, led by their second-year quarterback out of Alabama. It's Tua Tungavailoa. To absolutely no one's surprise, the Dolphins did invest a high first-round pick, number five overall to draft two in 2020. I think that most people would say that his rookie year had plenty of positives, but it was sprinkled with a few negatives as well. Remember, he controversially took over for Ryan Fitzpatrick during the open week prior to week eight. Miami did go six and three in his starts from that time, but he had to get rescued a few times in games by Fitzmagic. And in his own words, he called his rookie year below average. I don't think the franchise believes that, but they're looking forward to seeing him improve. And some room to work. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Let's go. And that's McCoy, who is still down following the play. Appears shaken up. We'll take a break and get a report from Vegas after this. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Looking to pass to him. Got a man open. That's Devontae Parker complete. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. It's another first down as they bite off 23 more on that one. And we all remember when Devontae Parker was drafted, a first-round pick out of Louisville, really hit his stride in 2019 with 1,200 yards. Numbers dipped a bit last year, but he can be a real dependable target for Tua Tungavailoa. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Now the former Washington Husky, here's Miles Gaskin. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. 
On second and nine. Tua. And this is caught. It's Parker. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle comes at the Raiders' 14. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. We'll take a break and get a report from Vegas after this. game not even two minutes old but a quick red zone opportunity it's first and ten at the 14 going to the air tug of Iloa and he's wrapped up taken down back at the 25 Max Crosby in there to bury him for a loss of 11. In recent years pass rush has been a problem for the Raiders just 21 sacks in 2020 that ranked 29th in the NFL what they just did right there, a better example of what they're seeking. Well, they're in some hot water now after that sack. It's second and 21. On the handoff, it's Gaskin. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Just a one-yard loss that time, but that's not what they needed. Now they're dealing with a third and long. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Here's Tua. They'll get this out wide to Gaskin. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. That'll bring up fourth down. They wind up getting eight yards, but they needed more than that. And a good sign for them right now to have their young quarterback looking confident on the opening drive. Now, we haven't met a young quarterback, a veteran quarterback. It doesn't matter. We haven't met a quarterback yet that doesn't tell us he's confident about his abilities, right? That's true. But when you're young, it's really important to get off to a good start because it does build up that confidence and allows him to play better as the game goes on. Especially crucial here on the road. Sanders' kick is good. And the opening drive for the Dolphins yields three. In the end, the opening drive, Charles does yield points. Maybe not the touchdown that they wanted, though. Yeah, but bottom line, they wanted to get something out of that drive, and they did that. Three points, they won't turn that down at all. the field goal. Here comes Sanders to kick it away. Jalen Richard now on the return. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. The Raiders getting ready to go to work for the first time, and they're led by their quarterback in his eighth season now in silver and black, Derek Carr. And the rumors were pretty strong. The teams asked about him in the offseason. But for once got a pretty firm not available from the Raiders. Now in his eighth season as a Raider, still yet to appear in a playoff game, but last year, really solid numbers again. A third straight 4,000 yard campaign, 27 touchdowns, just nine interceptions, and the highest analytical rating of his career. Derek Carr is one of the top quarterbacks in the NFL. First rep of the game for Josh Jacobs. A solid stiff arm, and he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. And there's a typical run by Josh Jacobs, one more as a defender. You have to make a decision about how you approach him because he's awfully physical with the ball in his hands. 12 touchdowns on the ground last year after seven as a rookie, and he was a 1,000-yard rusher in each of his first two seasons. 
Wouldn't surprise me with enough touches, he could easily crack the 1,500-yard mark. So they'll come up first in 10 now from the 33. Here's the first carry for Kenyon Drake. And this is going to be a Raiders first down as the tackle made at about the 43-yard line. Nice sharp run there by Kenyon Drake, and he's awfully tough to get on the ground. And how about this Raiders backfield? It's certainly not lacking for punch, having signed Drake this year and already having Josh Jacobs in the backfield. Now, Drake, he's never had a 1,000-yard season, but last year in Arizona was his best yet. 955 yards and 10 rushing touchdowns, plus he can catch it swinging out of the backfield. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Carr going to give it to Jacobs. Defensively, a solid response after giving up back-to-back -back first downs. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Second and nine. To throw its car. And this goes out wide for Drake. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Give them 12 yards that time at a Las Vegas first. Derek Carr, very precise thrower of the football. What's the game plan for going up against him? Yeah, it used to be take away the short stuff, I know, but he's more than a dink and dunker, right? And you are right about that. Great analysis of him because he has evolved as a thrower. Now he can push the ball downfield, but still, the number one things you want to take away, short passes, intermediate passes. So sharp, precise, and accurate, you've got to sit on those routes in order to cause him problems. Here's Jacobs on first and 10. And he'll bring this one inside the 35. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. Counter play with Jacobs. And this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and now they're faced with a third and one. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really, they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. Try to run for it with Jacobs. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Had a chance to maybe limit them to three if they could have gotten that stop there, but a new set of downs. And with a new set of downs, you got to take the mentality of the whole thing. Right now, everyone's looking at the offense and saying they've got the advantage. The best defenses just say, okay, new set of downs. It gives us another chance to make a play ourselves and maybe change things up. So they'll come up first in 10 now from the 33. Now they'll throw with Carr. He'll find his tight end. That's Waller. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. From the 28, it's second and five. Now Carr. Catch is made by Hunter Renfro. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphin 16. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. And Hunter Renfro has given them great production for a fifth-round pick. 56 catches last season. And we know he's famous for being third in Renfro. But I think he's pretty good on first and second down, too. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. 
into the red zone. It's Carr. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Eric Rowe. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Charles, not only is that an interception, it's one when you were really knocking on the door for a touchdown inside the red zone. You're actually thinking points. No matter what, at worst, you're thinking kicking a field goal and getting three. We might look back on this in the second half and say, you remember when they didn't get points on that drive? This could cost them. And the Dolphins head back out, Charles, and they're one and one now after two weeks. Had the big road win, you remember, at New England week one, but man, they did not show up at all in week two losing 35 to nothing at home to the Buffalo Bills. Now they, they lost to a tongue of Ilo in the second or in the second drive, I should say, to a rib injury. But was this just a one week clunker that you throw out or is this a team that's now in a little bit of trouble? Well, I think if you're in Miami, you'll say it's a one week clunker. We'll put it behind us and move on. But if you're observing from the outside, you look at their schedule a little bit and you wonder if they are in a little bit of trouble because they have to go to Las Vegas now and the Raiders are hot two and up. Then home for the Colts, another tough game. And then two games against their Florida neighbors, one at Tampa and then the other against Jacksonville all the way in London. So nothing easy coming up, but they've got to get the offensive line settled. And apart from Jalen Waddell, can Will Fuller come back and help him out as a dynamic skill player? Can they get the ball to Mike Gusecki? Those are the questions that have to be answered for Miami as they try and put that one behind them. Looking to throw again on second down. Tua. Now the pressure gets there, and Tua is going to be taken down. Max Crosby able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. It seemed like he kept going through those progressions, and I thought he might dump that underneath, but he couldn't get rid of the football in time. And I have to wonder if he was thinking while he was back there, I wish there were a lot less progressions on this play, just someone that I can dump the ball to and get it out of my hands. <laughs> So now after the sack, Tua and the Dolphins staring at a third and long. Now Tua. He's letting this one go for Fuller. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Now that one hurts defensively. They force him in the third and long, had the advantage, yet they give up the big play right there. Yeah, their offense was already warming up on the sideline, ready to come out. So much for that three and out. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. This is Gaskin on the carry. And the lane closes up quickly as he'll get about three down to the 38. The passing game's been working quite well so far, but the running game's been a little bit of a struggle. That's a surprise to me. Typically, when you can throw it, you've opened up lanes for your runners. Second and seven. Tua sets up to pass it. He'll get this to his tight end, Gesicki. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Play action. Now it's Tua. He'll get that one to Carter complete. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. And they pick up a first down, and that came out of the fullback position. But as you and I both know, that doesn't necessarily mean that's a fullback playing in that spot. Well, times have changed, right? The old school fullback doesn't really exist anymore. We're not getting that same player out of college with all the spread offenses, not very many pro style where you actually have a true fullback. We're having to make do in the NFL and put guys in that spot who emulate it but aren't necessarily in that position. A nice substantial run there by Gaskin, who was the Dolphins leading rusher in 2020. 584 total yards in just seven starts and got stronger as the season went on. Not bad for a seventh round pick in 2019. He was drafted number 234 overall that season. 
They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. Being chased out left. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. Now how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. They'll run now with Gaskin. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. They'll break the huddle and come up on the ninth play of this drive, needing five yards on third down. And able to find Gesicki as tight end. And the Dolphins are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with Let's six go. points. They're Let's able go. to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. Touchdown! Two of fighting Devontae Parker for the touchdown there. And the Dolphins add on to their lead. Well, there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Jason Sanders now for the extra point. He's got it, and now it's a 10-0 lead here in the opening quarter. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it winds up in six points for the Dolphins. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Here comes Richard on the return. And he returns this to the 22. All day, baby, all day. Well, one of only seven teams in the NFL to start 2-0. Here come the Las Vegas Raiders again as they bring out their offense. And the Raiders, one of the most impressive teams in the league, no doubt, through two weeks, CD, getting big wins over AFC North contenders Baltimore and Pittsburgh. You broadcasted that game on Sunday. What stood out to you that got Vegas the win? Derek Carr, Derek Carr, Derek Carr. He's going to get MVP chance when he returns home to Las Vegas this week. He's been spectacular the first two weeks of the season. Got going against Baltimore, carried it over against Pittsburgh. Remember, Josh Jacobs, their running back, didn't play. So they oh, he breaks a tackle, and he's got an alley. And finally, he goes out of bounds right at the 35-yard line. And CD, we have seen some great runs the last few times we've been together, but I think we could at least put this one in our top five. That was a determined gallop there. Yeah, and that's a run born out of ferociousness. He took on that initial contact, and in his mind just screamed, out of my way, and kept right on going and wound up turning it into a big play. On first down, Carr. And trying to get it to runs, but it's intercepted. Picked off, Byron Jones. And he will be brought down, but he's got the interception on the final play of this first quarter. 10-0 the score after one on EA Sports. Oh, 
The Dolphins at the line, ready for their next drive. This offense, thankful, I'm sure, to have the football back, but also, Charles, after a long drive of their own, they've got to be a little weary. Yeah, I would agree with that, and what you have to do to combat it, try and get fresh legs in where you can, especially the skill positions, and then for the offensive line, instead of attacking, maybe slow the tempo down a little bit, let them catch their breath. Second down at five. Throwing now is Tugavailoa. That one brought in by his tight end, Adam Shaheen. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. So many times in my career I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing, but as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. So here's a first and 10 now in Raider territory at the 35-yard line. Here's Gaskin. This will be a gain of about 8 to the 27-yard line. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Now a handoff here to his running back. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Give him 12 yards there, and the Dolphins have a first down. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? But his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. And he'll give it here to his running back. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Still nine remaining on second down. Two are going to throw. And that's incomplete. Well, to me, there is no question about the intent there, and I think he was a little fortunate that the penalty flag didn't come out for grounding. But he'll get away with it and get another shot on third down. The Dolphins on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This is third and nine. Looking to throw. He's gonna flip one out here to his running back. And he is out of bounds, getting it down to the 10. Five yards, not enough, and it'll be fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back, but how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? Sanders' kick is good. And that'll push the lead up to 13 to nothing. So the turnover leads to points as they add three there. Yeah, what a sequence there and a nice one for them. They force the interception, put together a little drive, and then come away with three points. Nothing to it, partner. Just do it. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. Here comes Richard on the return. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. 
Here's Las Vegas ready to take the field. To this point, the results have not been good. Two possessions, two turnovers. And that's obviously something that can't continue, but to go a little bit deeper on that one, I would think about some play calls now, not even necessarily to my best player, but to someone I can trust with the ball, try and get things settled down a little bit. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10 at their own 16. On the ground, it's Jacobs to start the drive. And he'll take this one up over the 20 to the 21-yard line. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Well, they did throw interceptions on their last two drives, so no surprise at all they decided to start it with a running play. I'm actually a little bit surprised, though, that they got as much out of it as they did. Yeah, decent little gain. Puts them in a pretty good spot for second down. To throw on second and six. Carr, throw right side, going to be caught by Waller. First down, Raiders, Carr to Waller. No tight end had more catches in 2020 than Darren Waller with 107. The third most by a tight end in history. Maybe we should just take the label off and call him an outstanding receiver. On first and 10, here's Carr. Looking again for Waller, and he's got him again. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. Play action, now it's Carr. Looking left sideline, incomplete. Well, Charles, looking back to week two in the NFL, boy, some quarterback injuries all over the place. Tua for Miami goes down. Indianapolis is Carson Wentz. Tyrod Taylor in Houston. Andy Dalton for the Bears all leave their games with injuries. Even Baker Mayfield had to play through one. Of all of those guys and all those injury situations, which one are you keeping your eye on most? Well, can I use two? In fact, I'm going to use two. Thanks for the permission. I appreciate that. Indianapolis, Carson Wentz going down, Jacob Eason having to take over. From what I hear, a significant rolled ankle, which probably means he'll miss multiple games. And if that's the case, Jacob Eason has to take over, and the Colts lean even harder on their run game. Man, how about Miami with Tua? Tua going down, Jacoby Brissett coming in. It's a rib injury. Can he go the very next week against the Raiders? If not, Brissett has experience in doing that, and Miami will need the win on the road. As far as Chicago and Andy Dalton, I think they were ready to make the move to Justin Fields pretty soon anyway. Baker Mayfield's a tough guy, and I really hate it for Tyrod Taylor, although Davis Mills was drafted to be their future quarterback. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked up by Xavier Howard. Another what? tremendous play stop. by Xavier Howard. Ten interceptions led the NFL last year. And he was the first defender since Antonio Camardi in 2007 with 10 or more in a season. When you throw it in his area, you're taking a gamble. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game. Through the air first, maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. He was looking for Parker that time, and it's second down. Well, Charles, switching gears here, you know, through two weeks of the NFL season, only seven unbeaten teams remain, only two in the AFC. If you look at the full list in the AFC, it's Denver and Las Vegas. Over on the other side, Carolina, Tampa Bay, Arizona, the LA Rams, and that's into a crowd and intercepted. Picked by Nick Kwiatkowski. And he takes this one back into the end zone, and the Raider defense delivers a score. It goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. 
That's a ball he would like to have back, and it lands right in the lap of the defender from there. He doesn't have very far to go before he gets to the end zone, and he got there in a hurry. Now for the extra point, Daniel Carlson. And that'll make it 13-7. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Jakeem Grant now to return. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped it to 23-yard line. Tua and the rest of the Dolphin offense heading back out. He's had one of those games that any quarterback loves, not only being able to complete some passes, but some deep passes. And it's pretty to watch. I mean, it's an absolute joy to see, but let's face it. We got to give a little bit of credit where it's deserved, right? Well, the protection's been great. Protection's That's where you're been, going. The protection's been phenomenal, but how about how it's been spotlighted, right? Our producer, Christian McLeod, our director, Kyle Burt, the rest of the crew, what they put together with these images and pictures, if you're an offensive lineman, that's what you're taking with you to contract time. <laughs> They're going to have a lot to take to contract time if this continues. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. Tonga Vailoa trying again after the pick six. Dancing to his left. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. The play fake for Gaskett. Now Tua. Out left to Shaheen. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. When you get a big tight end like this, sometimes it takes more than one man to bring him down. Oftentimes, your best bet, just jump on and hold on and wait for your teammates to arrive to help get him on the ground. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Tongue of Iloa working out of the gun. Finding a safety valve here. That's complete. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Three yards the gain there, second down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. Ike, he's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a the toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd went to ballet school, got the toes down, and stayed in bounds. To throw again on second down. Tua. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was looking for his tight end, Mike Kosicki. And it'll bring up third down. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there. And they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. He's going to let this go for the end zone. There's Fuller for a Dolphin touchdown. Touchdown! Will Fuller, 53 yards. And the Dolphins are able to extend that advantage. But we saw Tua Tagovailoa hit on some big ones in his college days to Henry Ruggs and Jerry Judy. And that left arm, pretty underrated in terms of strength. And that is absolutely demoralizing for a defense because you've got the offense on the ropes. It's third down. 
You're trying to get off the field and then wham. You have a letdown in the secondary and you give up a big one. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And the lead now stands at 13. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Jalen Richard going to take it out of his end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. The Las Vegas' is offense back out there, ready to go. And three interceptions in this game, and I would have to think, I wasn't a quarterback, but number four is kind of, oh, you're like, oh, man, I can't throw four. No, and what's interesting is, what do the coaches decide to do now? Having thrown three, do you alter your offensive strategy? Do you take the ball out of his hands and maybe turn to the running game? Or do you have that supreme confidence that he's going to turn things around? <laughs> we'll see what they do. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. That's complete to his tight end, Waller. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. First play of the drive going for 14 and also going for a first down. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. Carr now on first down. And that's caught. It's Brian Edwards. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. That one will go as a gain of 11. Raiders having a first down as well. And Brian Edwards, the third of three high draft picks the Raiders used on receivers last year, if you count Lynn Bowden. They got him in the third round out of South Carolina. A big, strong, physical receiver. They expect more catches like the one we just saw there. They'll run on first down. It's Jacobs, and he'll be taken down just shy of midfield after a gain of about four. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Second down, Jacobs once more, pushing through the contact, and he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 44-yard line. Carr, a handoff here to Drake. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. Well, we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. And he will not get away from the pressure here. Carr taken down. Christian Wilkins. Credit him with a sack as he buries him for a loss of 10. Well, when you're down a couple of scores like this, CD, you can't afford too many plays that go in the wrong direction like that one. Yeah, when you take a good look at it broadly, sacks are better than giving up an interception. But where they are on the scoreboard, they've got to get rid of all of that and just create positive plays for themselves in order to have a chance. So after the sack, Carr in Las Vegas with a third and long. Carr going to throw. He'll set up the screen to Drake. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. 
They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. I wonder what was going through his mind when he got the play call. He just got sacked on the previous play. He knows they're coming after him again. A little bit of guts to stand in there, take the hit, and successfully complete the screen pass. Really well done. On fourth down, A.J. Cole comes on to punt. Jakeem Grant back deep for Miami. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the 15-yard line. Not too bad. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. A good job in the passing game. Decent job in the running game, but really they've been more effective uh, through the air. We'll see if that shifts at all as this goes on. Thus far, it feels like they're calling this game in reverse. Normally you run to set up the pass. Here it feels like they're passing, hoping to set up the run and be more effective later on in the game. Yeah, you can do it both ways. We usually talk about it in the reverse, however. No doubt about it. Two and the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 15. And to give this time to the tailback. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown, so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Six yards left on second down. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And he'll take this forward for about five as we have come upon the two-minute warning. Shut down, shut down. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. A reminder, coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will join us from Orlando with our halftime report. But business to take care of before we get there. A two-minute drill before the coach's two-minute drill. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Got what they needed there. The drive continues with a nine-yard pickup. That's a big conversion there on third down because they did not want to give the ball up here late in the half. They'd love to take the clock all the way down and score. This will definitely help the cause. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Here's Tua. Shaheen the tight end on the right side. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. 17 yards for the Dolphins there as they've got themselves a first down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. From midfield, here's Tua. Tua hit, and the ball is out. And the Raiders have recovered. Every week we hear talk about create turnovers, create turnovers. In particular, they wanted to force some fumbles. They got one right there. And it shows you how the game has changed over time. It used to be good enough for a guy to get a sack of the quarterback in the pocket. Now, if you come to the sidelines and you didn't knock the ball free, your coaches are upset with you, all right? So if you're a quarterback, it starts all the way back in the youth leagues. Take care of the ball, take care of the ball, take care of the ball, because here come the defenders. So after the fumble recovery, it's Carr. They'll find his tight end. That's Waller. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large-body tight ends, and why not? Nowadays, 
they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. From the 38, Carr, a short one here, secured by the tight end, Waller. Now the Raiders are going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. now on first down toward the right sideline but it's incomplete to this point I've been impressed with the work defensively they have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free and there's another example another incompletion now Carr after the incomplete pass brings him up ready, second and ten shotgun now for Carr He's going to let this one go deep. And that's going to be caught for a Raider touchdown. Brian Edwards, 30 yards. And the Raiders get a late score here in the final minute of the first half. I think everyone in the league talks about finishing, don't they? Doesn't matter whether it's a quarter, a half, a game, a series, whatever. But they're finishing the first half in fine style, putting that one in the end zone. They did, and they didn't leave much time on the clock either. Well done. Carlson now to add the extra point. And it's good. The deficit six, 20 to 14. Scoring summary, three play drive. And it ends with a Las Vegas touchdown. Touchdown, ready to kick it away is Carlson. This is Jakeem Grant. And he will make it to the 20 yard line and no further. Let's go. Getting set to go again as we look at the back, heading onto the field again. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter, been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards you've really done some damage in an nfl game and now he's looking just to add to his totals on first down tongue of iloa And this is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. He had a big gainer in his sights, but he could not reel it in. Well, Charles, you know, week two always an important one for teams who lost in week one that had high expectations. And we talked earlier about the 2-0 and teams, but of those teams that lost in week one and then won in week two, I'm thinking in the AFCs, Buffalo and New England both got back on the horse. They certainly did, but less of a surprise with them because I think we kind of expected Buffalo to beat Miami even though it was on the road, and we expected New England to beat the Jets. But how about Tennessee going on the road and beating Seattle, coming from 15 down in the second half to get it done? That was absolutely really, really impressive. And also, Dallas going to the Los Angeles Chargers after losing a tough one to Tampa Bay on opening night. I don't know how many people thought that Dallas would win that one. A big win for them keeps them going in the NFC East. The Raiders call on a nickel set here for third down. From the gun, it's Tua. Here's Fuller with a catch. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout. 
as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in this first half. Tua setting up shop to throw again. He's letting this one go for Fuller. That's caught at the 25. And he will be taken down deep in Las Vegas territory. Now the Dolphins will use the last of their timeouts as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. The kick by Sanders is good. And that will make this a nine-point lead. So a nice kick there as they are able to add on to their lead. And that's exactly what you're looking to do. Maneuver yourself into range. That way, if your drive stalls out, you're able to get something out of it. And they do so right there. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Here comes Richard on the return. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. All you got to do is look and learn. Look and learn, baby. The offense for Las Vegas about set to begin the drive. And with only nine seconds remaining, with well, not much time, we'll see how they play this. They'll indeed try to run it out as they start on the ground. And defensively, they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. And they line up now for what will likely be the last play of the first half. The final shot here before half for Carr. He uncorks it for Sneed. On the throw, let him too much that time. It's incomplete. So we've reached halftime here, and it's the visiting Dolphins taking a lead to the locker room. As we send you to our EA Studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. We saw a strong first half from our quarterback. First, though, time for a check of the next-gen stats from that first half for Miami. And our statistician may need a vacation after this one's said and done. What a first half they had throwing the football. Over 300 yards passing already. Meanwhile, for the Raiders, they too were able to take advantage of a soft secondary as both of these two teams really threw the ball at will in that first half. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Raiders are going to have it first, and they trail here as we get back to it in this third quarter of action. Here comes Richard on the return. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Derek Carr getting set and ready to go again on offense here. And he's looking to take much better care of the football here in half two after three first half interceptions. We don't have to just look strictly at the numbers here. You know what else happens to a team when you turn it over three times like that? It erodes confidence in you. 
and it erodes confidence in the offense. And so now you have the defensive guys looking over and saying, what is going on here? And instead of playing for the team, they're playing angry and mad at their teammates. The Raider offense set to get this drive started. And they're on the short end of the scoreboard here. Charles, what adjustments, if any, do you think they need to make for the second half? Well, paraphrasing the gold medal hockey winning coach Herb Brooks, I just say you continue to play your game throw the ball. They had success doing it in the first half, so make sure you keep getting the ball to your playmakers, a little bit more to the perimeter perhaps, but above all, play your game. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. To throw its car. Short throw, going to be caught by Waller. That'll put him right at 99 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. Henry Ruggs, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Well, that incompletion gives us another chance to look league-wide here. And like we said earlier, too early to draw conclusions through two weeks of the season, CD. But there were certainly a few teams out there who kind of fell to earth a little bit in week two after a big week one. Maybe the biggest one, New Orleans had that huge week one win, Charles, and then lost in week two. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll come back to them because Houston, no surprise at all, losing at Cleveland. Miami. Eh, not really a surprise, even though they were at home against Buffalo. Pittsburgh, that was a surprise. Las Vegas came on the road and got them. Philadelphia played tough at home against the 49ers. But the New Orleans one, how long have they been on the road, Brandon? They've been on the road for forever, right? I mean, trying to get their thing organized and not being able to play at home, having to train away from, from New Orleans. Not a surprise at all that finally it caught up with them and a tough loss for them in Carolina. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Now, Carr again. And he will not get away from the pressure here. Carr taken down. So that time, Charles, a quarterback helpless, really, in the pocket in the face of a pass rush like that. They were on him instantly. And what a great call defensively there because they decided to bring pressure off the corner. And a lot of times, those big linemen, they can't account for the speed of a defensive back. And that time, he made a beeline right for the quarterback and got it. The cat blitz, tough to defend. On second down. It's Drake, and this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. Just a one-yard loss that time, but that's not what they needed. Now they're dealing with a third and long. Well, they went back to him, but the results were similar, so I highly doubt that he'll get another opportunity here on third and long. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Here's Carr to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. And when you throw as many interceptions as he has in this one, you definitely start getting a little hesitant to throw the ball out wide because that's prime pick six territory. That time, he made sure the only guy who was going to catch it was sitting in the third row. Here's A.J. Cole now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Fair catch called for and made at the 16 or maybe the 17-yard line. 36 yards on the punt with no return, and it'll be Dolphin football. And let's shift our attention to Will Fuller. Seems like the measuring stick for a receiver for a great game is 100 yards. Well, he's well past that now. And as we analyze how he's getting him, that's where it really becomes fun because, let's face it, they keep sending coverage at him, keep trying to put the pressure on, yet he finds ways downfield and finds openings. That's a really crafty receiver. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. There he goes left side. The 30. 
20. And all the way in for a Miami touchdown. Miles Gaskin, 83 yards. And the Dolphins are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. The CD, I mean, there are touchdown runs, and then there are touchdown runs. And that one certainly fell into the latter category. Now that deserves a couple exclamation points. And now they'll empty the backfield here as they elect to go for two. The two are going to try and throw for it to the end zone, but it's incomplete. Tough there, good pass, hit the hands, he just couldn't bring it in. And every receiver's coach everywhere seeing that play, focus, focus, focus. Watch it all the way in and tuck it away. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Here comes Richard on the return. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. And now Derek Carr, he is the focus of our player spotlight. And I guess right now as we look at some of his struggles today, the term next play really applies here. He's got to move on. I love where your head is on that because that's where his head needs to be, exactly what you said. Yes, there have been mistakes made, but he's got to move on and play the next play as if it didn't happen, keep his confidence up. But how about the guys on the defensive side of the ball? They've got to be feeling great about what's going on right now. They've already gotten to him a few times. They want to keep that up. Maybe they can pick off a few more. Yeah, they disrupted already for three INTs. And he's going to be brought down. Back at his own six-yard line. Let's go, boys. Let's go. When you see a quarterback retreating away from the line of scrimmage toward the other goal line like that, usually doesn't end well. You're exactly right about that. Normally, if they're moving from side to side, they've got a chance maybe to get back upfield. He was trying to shake defenders and extend the play, but it doesn't work out very well for them at all. You need those extra yards on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Now you're digging a hole for your offense. On second down, it's Drake. And the stiff arm made it a pretty little run. Not a huge gain, but a nice chunk of yardage. That'll net seven yards on the ground, but it'll leave him with a healthy distance still to go on third down. Now Carr. And that is incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Here's A.J. Cole now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And the go. offense will take over with a new set of downs. Miami set to take over. And coming off a one-play drive that was so deflating for the defense, what, what's their mentality? How do they rally here and stop this offense? Well, hopefully there's some determination that sets in because I, they weren't ready to go on the last one. Give all the credit to the offensive guys for getting it done, but to allow a run of that length, that's just not being prepared. So now, are they determined? Are they ready to read their keys and make the proper plays? And we'll see how determined they are. And now the throw going to Fuller, and he's got it. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Now here's a handoff out of the gun. He'll get only a couple down to the 44. 
Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. From the 44, Tua. And that'll be incomplete. But listen, when you've got the lead, there's absolutely no sense trying to fit a ball in where you shouldn't. You can see the coaching in his head taking place on that play because he saw he had a receiver in the area. He just put it well over his head, out of harm's way. And now on third down, they'll need to get it to the 36 to pick up the first. Two are going to throw. Now the pressure gets there, and Tua is going to be taken down. Max Crosby giving him once again his third sack of the afternoon. A CD, a little bit of feast or famine for him. He's had some success throwing the football, but also now he's been sacked four times. Yeah, you just mentioned the four sacks, but you're right. He has managed to hang in there and make plays at times. His offensive line, they've got to figure it out and pick things up and give him more opportunities. And he has to help them by getting rid of the ball a little bit quicker as well. Here's Michael Pilardi now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. And this will do the job nicely as that will be out of bounds just inside the 10-yard line. So they'll play the field position game here as a very nice punt is going to pin them back. Yeah, it's almost like watching a game of tennis or do you prefer ping pong, you know, back and forth like that? But that definitely was excellent, wasn't it? The Vegas offense ready for their next possession. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. Where's 52? Black 52. They'll begin on the ground with Jacobs. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. Come on, man. Set the you better do something. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. They fake the handoff. Now Carr. And this will be caught by Edwards. And able to get this one out just shy of the 25 at the 24. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive. First down. And they were backed up to start the drive, but not anymore. Now that's the play call that the offensive coordinator had in his head. You saw the end result. He wanted to go ahead and push the ball downfield, and that's what they did. And they wound up with good yardage there to get things rolling. On first down, it's Jacobs. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. Wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Carr. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Edwards. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. A pickup of 10, and it's enough for a Las Vegas first down. Had to put that ball in there with a little extra zip, but he put it right where it needed to be. Yeah, and that little extra pace that he had on the pass, that required a little extra concentration for him, didn't it? Ball can get on you pretty quick in that manner, and he handled it well and picked up the first down. On first down, Carr. A short one here, secured by the tight end, Waller. A gain of six there on first. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Quarterback, don't get nervous now. 
on play action. Now Carr. And he will not get away from the pressure here. Carr taken down. Give the sack to Jerome Baker. Well, he shot in, CD, like he was out of a cannon from that linebacker position. And even though they had a running back in the backfield, no one could stop him. Well, you certainly diagnosed that play perfectly because as fast as he got into the backfield, you're exactly right. The running back had no shot to get over and try and protect his quarterback, and a sack resulted. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now Carr. He finds his man complete. That's Jacobs. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. Eight yards on the screen there, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. Got that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. Here's A.J. Cole now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. And out come the Dolphins now. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 22. Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. Throw left side here, complete to the tight end, Gesicki. And they work this well upfield across the 45. 25 yards there on the catch and run. We saw this jumping jack make steady improvement in the first three years in Miami. He topped it off with 53 catches last year, career high. Now in his fourth season, I expect his numbers to continue to rise. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. Hands it off out of the gun. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Tua sets up to pass it. It's complete to Fuller. And past the 35, he'll be dropped on, a yard or two go. shy of the 30. Let's go. The Dolphin passing game rolling here. They've got another first down. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. So here's a first and 10 now in Raider territory at the 32-yard line. Throwing now is Tungabailoa. Out left to Shaheen. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. I like how they worked the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not only going to catch the football. He's going to run away from you a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. Now a handoff here to his running back. Nevin Lawson there on the tackle. Well, partner, they've been running it well the entire game, and the big guys up front, they're a huge reason why. And now they're reaping the benefits as they continue to open up big holes and gain nice yardage. From the 16, Tua. He'll get this to his tight end, Gesicki. And the Dolphins are going to be set up with a first on, and goal brother. here as the tackle made at the nine. I'd have to say they're feeling like they are in rhythm right now. 
things are in sync, aren't they? Team's winning, got a nice little margin on the scoreboard, completing some passes, and they just completed another one for a first down there to the tight end. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And only about a yard there as he takes it from the nine to the eight. Three quarters have come and gone. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Las Vegas. Welcome back, everybody. It's Dolphin football. It's also Dolphin lead to begin quarter number four. Here's second and goal, operating from the eight-yard line. Another run with Gaskin. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play there. They're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal. So stuff for no gain on second down brings up a pretty interesting third from this distance. I'm throwing the ball, and I'm not even thinking about play pass. I'm going to let them know right away I'm throwing it, but I'm probably giving my quarterback some room, sprint him out to one side or the other, and give him an opportunity that if it breaks down, he can take off and run for it. Now whistles and a flag, and I believe a Dolphin got going a little early. So that'll back him up five. Still third down. A bad time for a full start penalty as they're backed up now for third and goal. Now Tua. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Great defense there on third and goal. They took away everything. Forced him to fire that one to the sideline where no one could get it. Sanders' kick is good, and that will make this now an 18-point ball game. So that almost certainly the final piece to this puzzle, a three-score lead. I don't think there's any coming back from there. Well, you know, normally I'd get on you for giving up on the game right here, but I do think you're right in this case. This late in the game, two scores is tough enough. Three, I'm with you. That seems out of the question. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. Here comes Richard on the return. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down on, at the baby. 19. Let's go. Let's go. The Raiders offense now making their way back out onto the field. And the complexion of this one has really changed a fair amount. That last field goal makes it a three-score game, so they need points in a hurry with time dwindling in the fourth quarter. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. Carr going to throw. And Waller taking it in over the middle. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Throwing again on second down. Carr looking again for Waller, and he's got him again. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Four 
yards, the pickup, first down. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course, you gotta <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Carn out of throw. That's complete to his tight end, Waller. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 14 yards is the pickup there at a Raider first. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Again, they'll throw with Carr. He'll find his tight end. That's Waller. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the we Dolphins' 29-yard line. A new set of downs after a strong pickup of 16 yards. Nice idea, nice concept there. Line him up on the left side of the formation. Let him sneak his way across. Coming back underneath. Put it in his hands. Let him get a few more yards after the catch, too. Great way to utilize a tight end on the drag route. Car now on first down. Letting one go deep for the end zone. And this is incomplete. Oh, that looked like a sure six points, but he could not get that to stick. And that is a golden opportunity wasted there. Here's second and ten. Let's go. 552. Let's go, D. Throwing now is Carr. Catch made, it's Moreau. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. The Raiders on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. So this is third and four. Working from the gun, it's Carr. Going for it all. And that is incomplete. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Carlson able to put this one through. And that'll get the deficit down to 15. Well, he was a spectator for much of this game. This is his first field goal opportunity of the entire contest, but he's able to connect. Yeah, he had a pretty good seat to this one, didn't he? But let's face it, all kickers that you and I know, they want to contribute. They want their opportunity, and he seized his. After the made field goal, Carlson now sets up to kick this away. Now here's Jakeem Grant from his end zone. And he's probably realizing he should have stayed in the end zone as he can only go. muster a return to the 14-yard line. 
Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. Now, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Two in the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 14-yard line. Looking to pass, Tua. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Gesicki. And he's dropped just shy of the 25 at the 24. 10 yards there to start the drive and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. And this nearly an interception, but it's incomplete. Well, a turnover really would have helped him there, but not to be. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead, you've got to protect it, and he's taking chances putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? Tua with a throw complete to Parker. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Going to the air, Tonga Bailoa. And intercepted, maybe the turning point they need. Jonathan Abram picks it, and this one will be returned to right around the 38-yard line. Two-score game here in the fourth, and that pick, it kind of keeps the door ajar, doesn't it? It does, and you wonder about their strategy because with a two-score lead, you would think maybe you're just sitting on and trying to drain some clock. It's almost like they felt like, hey, we've got a good cushion. We can keep pressing it. It ended up costing them. The Raiders heading out to take over. The interception was a great starting point, but now they need points pretty quickly down two scores. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now after the INT, it's Carr. And his throw is incomplete. He was trying to get it that time to Brian Edwards. And now it's second down. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and 10. Here's Carr to throw. Man open, that's Henry Ruggs. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. First down Vegas as Carr finds Ruggs that time. Good yardage on the completion there. And when they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back. Pressure applied, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back at the 33-yard line. This defense, they just continue to feast. Five sacks now as a unit. It's been quite an afternoon getting to the quarterback. And we're seeing it come from a variety of places as well. Sometimes just the guys up front getting to them. Other times you add extra guys rushing the quarterback, twists and stunts. It's been a variety, and they've had no way of blocking them. Back quite a ways here, facing second and 19. Another try after the first down sack. Carr, and he'll find Moreau here. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. 
The Raiders on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This is third and nine. Now Carr, gonna throw deep for the end zone. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had it and dropped it. That is an unforced error there, and it takes away what could have been a touchdown. My first thought is surprise, because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? Now Carr, got to have this one. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Raiders try it on fourth down, but to no avail. And the Dolphins' defense is able to hold. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now, really hoping for a turnover. Tongue of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 24. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Open net is Waddle complete. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and it'll be second and very short. And on that last play there, he's over 400 yards passing now. You know what that generally means? Success. <laughs> that, and it means you really didn't miss opportunities. Usually very accurate. The ball's getting to the right place. Guys are making yardage after the catch to help you out that way. I mean, the whole team has picked it up. And don't forget, that means the offensive line has had to pass protect pretty well, too. Yeah, everyone dialed in. 145 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. A play fake for Gasket. Now Tua. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Tua once again here on second and 10. This will be caught. It's Waddle. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Dolphin first down. But when you're up by two scores in the fourth quarter and you're going to throw the football, expect to see a lot of man coverage because usually what comes along with man coverage is pressure. So if you're a play caller and you want to keep throwing the football, that's fine. Just make sure your offensive line understands they're going to get additional guys running at the quarterback. So here's a first and 10 now in Raider territory at the 44-yard line. From the gun, it's Tua. It's complete to Fuller. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. 19 yards there on the catch and run. These guys are running off this like you drive. The pedal is down. Stop down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's going to take this one down to about the 23-yard line. Denzel Perryman there to bring him down. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Throwing on second and eight, Tua to the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. 
That catch good for five. It's third down. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. The Dolphins on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This time it's third and three. Toward the back corner of the end zone, but he could not get the feet down. This will wind up incomplete. After what they faced during this game where they've given up a ton of yards downfield, there has to be a measure of revenge right there for the secondary. They've been shredded throughout the game and finally forced an incompletion. Sanders' kick is good. And that will make this now an 18-point ball game. So with that, you figure, yeah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down. But don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen. And you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Aren't I, though? After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. Here comes Richard on the return. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Come on now, let's go! Here's Las Vegas ready to take the field. And last time they were stopped on fourth down, had a drive stalled out. We'll see how they respond this go around. I'm eager to see what their mindset is because moving the ball, feeling good, and then that abrupt stop on fourth down, do they go back to the bench and go, oh, boy, they've got something for us? Or do they go to the bench and say, we blew it ourselves. Let's get back out there and move the ball again. And is it different when you get stopped on fourth versus punt? Is that more motivation for the defense, a little more confidence? I think as a defense, you're so excited with a fourth down stop. Making them punt, that's your goal anyway. But a fourth down stop, that's almost a sign of disrespect that they went for it in the first place. And when you get that, you feel great about yourselves. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Car now on first down. Pass caught by Ruggs, middle of the field. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Defensively, they're okay with that. Short little route, tackle him inbounds, okay. All right, cliche alert. It's time for someone to make a play because they've got to have something bigger downfield. They can't just take what they give them. They've got to force it and make something big happen for them. From the 38, Carr. And that one going to come up short, low throw. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. The Raiders on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This will be third and six. Now, Carr again. That's caught by Walter out left side. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. It's a first down, and he's also over 190 receiving yards now. What a game. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. Two first downs have them up near midfield now on first and 10. Mike 52, Mike 52. Here's Carr. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. This has been a rough one to put it mildly for them, and after this one's done, you just feel like at the post-game press conference, this team's going to have a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. Second and ten. Watch the curl, watch the curls. Mike 
On play action, now Carr. Open man, that's Renfro. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 25-yard line. A very solid gain of 27. Well, even after all those interceptions, he's not deterred. Still confident to go deep at work there. I think all the old rules about playing that position still apply. If things go wrong, you still act like you're the best player out on the field. You still carry that supreme arrogance with you and continue to fire the ball. I've seen guys have games like this, and this is where you find out if you're great or not. Can you overcome some interceptions and still lead your team to victory? So it's Raider football as we get you reset. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. On first down, Carr. And now the ball's out. Carr lost it. Fumble. But I think the Raiders are going to be able to hold on to it. Yes. A lot of bad news on that play for them, wasn't there? Lost the football. Lost a lot of yardage. But I think the good news outweighs it. Able to retain possession. That was big for them. Now this one from about two counties over after the sack. They come up on a second and very long. Carr going to get this to Drake. The Raiders going to use one of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. to throw got a man it's Darren Waller so this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards They're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Car to throw for it on fourth down. They'll let this go for the end zone. And this is intercepted, but they'll say out of bounds. So very close to a turnover there in the end zone. Toward the back corner of the end zone, but he could not get the feet down. This will wind up incomplete. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. Dolphins offense returning to the field and checking the timeouts. They do have two defensively, but no real need to use them as they're not going to be able to stop the clock after that. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 46. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Yeah, baby. Boom. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. All right, what a nice tackle there. That will hardly move the needle at all offensively. A very short gain. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. So a victory here for the Miami Dolphins, and they were really helped by their defense forcing three turnovers. 
I think what we saw in this one, today's defense. And what I mean by that is in the old days, pitching shutouts was big time. That was paramount. But the big thing was holding people down, holding down their yardage, right? Don't let them throw the ball through the air and gain a lot of... But now, it's about taking the ball away taking away possessions, getting the ball back for their offense. They had three takeaways in this one, and it led them to victory. Thank you. 